Hello everybody, it's Jamie and welcome again back to a book review. As I promised with the last uh, video of book reviews, we're gonna move on to uh, the next uh, book of the series, The Unseen Liners. And today we're gonna talk about The Unseen Aquatania, the third liner of the, the third liner of the Cunard uh, trio. Now this book has also some uh, chapters. Uh, it has in total again six and it will start with a grand lady, the world conflict, the roaring twenties, struggle for survival, once more onto the breach and the end of an era. So uh, I hope again you will uh, enjoy this um, uh, book review. So yeah, let's begin. So let's start with uh, chapter one, a grand lady. Now we all know that uh, uh, after the Martania and Lusitania were launched and that the uh, White Star Line had their um, Olympic and the ill-fated Titanic Cunard Line uh, then again decided to build, to, build, to, build, to build a third ship and that then being the Aquatania. Um, in this book you will then read in the first chapter uh, her building, like I said earlier a little bit of um, the prehistory before actually she was being built with the competition of White Star Line. Um, you also have some amazing pictures in this chapter of her launch and uh, the rivets were put in. Um, and a little bit of her interiors of course and her maiden voyage. So that's what you um, I think actually get in this chapter. I have to read again because I haven't read this in a long time. Yes, this is what you get in the first chapter. So the building, the maiden voyage, all that uh, amazing kind of stuff. And then again, a few pictures of her uh, interior. And now we shall move on to chapter number two. Uh, the World of Conflict. Uh, this of course talks about uh, the First World War. Um, what happens to the Aquatania before. Uh, she was pressed into service and as we all know she began um, as a hospital ship carrying the sick and the wounded. Um, you again have some amazing pictures then of uh, Aquatania herself while she was being painted white and with the green line and yellow cross, uh, yellow, red cross, uh, you know what I mean. Um, then you also have some amazing pictures of how her uh, lavish, beautiful interiors of a passionate liner were uh, transformed into a uh, hospital base. So, um, yeah, and then also a little bit later in the chapter, it talks how she went into uh, f f that she went from a hospital ship to a troop ship carrying, uh, of course, the soldiers. And then, uh, of course, you have all again some amazing pictures of. Uh, her as a um, troop ship. So uh, I think this is one of my favorite chapters because you have so many pictures of her in her uh, hospital livery and her troop livery. So uh, yeah. And now my friends, we move on to chapter three, the Roaring Twenties. Uh, this again, of course, talks after the war, uh, how she again was a passenger liner. Um, uh, before the war, of course, she had that, um, little bridge house on top of her decks um, and how it now uh, actually was removed so that you had the, the bridge house on the top was gone um, but um, then of course you talk about uh, or you read about uh, the voyages she had in the 1920s uh, the passengers who were on her uh, you have some amazing pictures of some celebrities on her that I will not spoil for you uh, so you can read the book and buy it yourself, but um, even if you, again, the pictures in this book of the Aquatania, it just reflects the beauty that these, uh, that she had. And uh, of course, I like the White Star Line, but if I should pick between the three sisters of the Lusitania, Mauritania and Aquatania, I'm sorry, my friends, but I would go highly for the Aquatania out of all three. Um, she's just my favorite. I like her deck uh, and her bridge and um, 
like I said, you have some amazing, amazing pictures in uh, this chapter again. So, uh, yes. And now we move on to chapter number four and struggle for survival. Um, in the stock market crash in late 1929, uh, of course, all companies had problems during the crash. Also, of course, the shipping companies and then also, of course, Cunard. It talks um, how it was a struggle for them to keep the passengers of ocean liners of their ships. And of course, also with the Aquitania. So in this chapter, uh, you read especially how they got the interest back into the Aquitania. So removing the top bridge house and of course, refurnishing some interiors in uh, the dry dock. Uh, actually, in my eyes, re rebuilding her for the better. Um, so that is, uh, this is quite a short chapter. Again, amazing pictures of her without her top bridge. And um, in this picture you also see um, an, an, an uh, amazing picture of a man who's looking at the Aquitania in her funnels, at her funnels. I, uh, I will try to find that picture because it's, it's, it's an amazing one to look at, but if I can't find it, as so I'm sorry. But, um, and if I can find it again, I will show it in, uh, in this video. So yeah, a quite a short chapter, but some amazing pictures of her again, and uh, what is that? I couldn't find that picture before, so I'm sorry I had to chase another one, or get another one. But now uh, we move on to chapter number 5, and that is once more onto the breach. And this talks of course about uh, World War II. Uh, and then uh, how she went again from the lovely Cunard uh, colors to like gray for uh, transporting the troops. Uh, again, he, here it talks about uh, how she was painted gray and uh, how that went. Um, how that went, yes. And uh, the trooping voyages she was on. And again, you have some amazing pictures of it, uh, of her. And some in this book, I really mean, in, in this especially book, there are some amazing pictures uh, um, of the Aquatania. And this proves again to me that she is my favorite uh, Cunard liner. I'm so sorry if uh, I ruined somebody's day with that. But um, that chapter of the, uh, how she in the Second World War, it's a short one. So, um, uh, but again, you're being treated with some amazing pictures. So, um, yes. And now we move on to the final chapter, the end of an era. All good things must come to an end. And sadly, that also meant the end of the uh, RMS Aquitania. Excuse me. Uh, in this chapter, you talk about her last voyage that she had, how it went. Uh, decks were crowded on her last voyage. Um, and how her final voyage again went to the scrapyard where she would have been scrapped. Um, I can't stop saying it, but the picture that you also have again in this chapter is amazing. So uh, in the last one, you have a picture and I don't know if I will find it, but I will read it out for you. Um, on 19 February 1950, one of the greatest Atlantic liners ever to sail the seas leaves her home port of Southampton for the last time. She is seen off by a crowd of well-wishers. It was the end of an era. And in the picture you see then the people waving her goodbye. So a final salute in a kind of sense. So uh, that is the final chapter of the book. And that is again the end of a book review. I hope you enjoyed this one of the series. This one is my favorite uh, book of the Aquatania. Like I now already said in the video a million times, she's one of my favorite ocean liners. Um, the next book of the series will be um, a ship we all know, the Unseen Titanic. Um, so I will, I hope you're hyped for that. Uh, and like I always say, if you have friends who like ocean liners or ships, please let them see my channel so we can grow. Trying to reach the 200 uh, sub 
account. So uh, again, thank you for that. And of course, uh, if uh, leave, you leave your thoughts on this book in the comments, it means a lot for me to read them and I like reading them. So uh, with that out of the way, guys, have a good night or day wherever you are. And we will see each other on the next video. Bye bye.